going live in just a moment or we should be actually streaming now or just give us the heads up so guys if you are watching let us know you're watching give us a hashtag live or a hashtag replay i'm just going to double check in the group and just make sure we are doing this properly so first of all welcome andrew cruzy thanks for having me man happy to be here awesome awesome all right so i'm just still going back just making sure this is all working properly. Monetize. Boom. Where the fuck are we? We're not here. Oh, yes, we are. There we go. We are here. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I'm super, super organized today. All right. So um, first of all, I'm super pumped to have you. Oh, we've got some people on as well. Some people are jumping on. Awesome. 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 So guys, if you are jumping on and you are watching, oh, there's Andrew Cruzy there. <laughs> there we go. All right. Here. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So guys, if you are watching, let us know you're watching, give us a hashtag live, give us a hashtag replay. Again, I'm super pumped to have Andrew um, on here today. Um, so thank you for, first of all, jumping on, taking your time to, to check in and things like that. Um, before we start, I just want to give you a massive wrap. Um, you've Andrew has, for those who don't know, Andrew has been a massive part of my success, my journey and things like that. Um, late last, I was probably mid last year or even around October, November, something like that. Um, I reached out to, I reached out to Andrew, um, uh, as I started, I was beginning to make um, some decent coin with my agency and, and things like that. And Andrew is someone who's really taught me how to scale my business online with my Facebook group, create an online community and things like that. Everything that I have learned in regards to Facebook groups, I owe it to Andrew. So you are in for an absolute treat with um, the things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and everything else. So again, welcome, Andrew. I'm super pumped to have you here. So whereabouts are you based right now? Yeah, so right now I'm in San Diego and I just want to say, dude, thank you so much for having me here and thank you to your community. And if you guys have any questions along the way, I'm here to answer any questions. So just drop them down below, whether that's growing an audience online or creating digital products such as courses or online coaching programs, anything like that. Drop the questions down below. And but to answer your question, uh, I'm in San Diego right now. I've been traveling for the past 14 months, being in a new city every month and just trying to find a place that feels like home. And I feel like I finally found it in San Diego. So I'm probably yeah. going to for a little bit. Yeah, because you spent a bit of time in Florida, right? With uh, And obviously there's a, there's quite a, com a little um, online community in Florida and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, I was in Miami for a little bit and I enjoyed it. But uh, I found the girls didn't really like me. In my <laughs> <laughs> Just a different vibe. And I'm like, damn, I came to San Diego. Here. Yeah, I came to San Diego. The girls liked me a lot more. So like, <laughs> it's but, an important factor, right? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, but both places, Miami and San Diego, if like you want to be surrounded by entrepreneurs, like these yeah. are two great cities to like level up and mastermind yeah. and network with amazing entrepreneurs. Especially in San Diego, the digital entrepreneur space is huge out here, especially the digital coaching yeah. online space, like a bunch of like six and seven figure uh, um, influencers and businesses out here. It's, it's crazy. Awesome. Awesome. So as guys, for those who are watching and I can see that we've got a couple of people jumping on now, which is amazing. Um, as I mentioned before, and as Andrew mentioned before, guys, if you have any questions in regards to um, anything that we're talking about, building an online presence, anything like that, this is the opportunity. Um, Andrew is a highly sought after speaker. Um, he charges a lot for his time. So this is an absolute treat to have him on and things like that. So let's dive straight into it. Let's, and, and first of all, what I really want to do is talk about your story because essentially this is a big part of, of why you got, how you got to where you are. So can you give us a little bit of a background background on like what the last two years have looked like from working in a full-time job to now, you know, successfully building this business empire, whatever you want to call it um, to a point now where you've got, a massive influence you're obviously making coin and Ooh. and all the other things around it 
Yeah, man, it's been freaking insane. Um, my life was totally different two years ago, and I have to attribute a, the majority of it to um, building an online presence and creating programs online that impact people's lives and that are scalable. Yeah. Um, you're not trading your time for money anymore. Um, but man, like two years ago, I was still working a nine to five job. I was like you uh, uh, just six months ago or eight months ago, side yep. hustling agency. Yep. And uh, hate, just kind of hating what I was doing. And I knew I wasn't meant for that. And um, so I read the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Yep. And he kind of gives you the playbook to transition out of your job and start your entrepreneur career. And you can be location independent. I'm like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Yep. So um, I bought a course by Dan Henry then, uh, Facebook ads for entrepreneurs. And he basically showed me the blueprint on how to run a Facebook ads agency. And I transitioned out of my job and I grew that Facebook ads agency to 10K per month in three months. Um, it was, I was working like 60, 70 hours a week and taking a lot of pre-workout and it wasn't like the life I wanted to be living. Yep. And I felt like I reached a money cap in my agency yep. um, at that point where it was going between 15 or 10 to 15K per month. And um, at that point, I was like, crap, I need to find a way to scale. And I wasn't really ready at that point to hire people um, and hire VAs and that sort of thing. So I started growing an online community and teaching people how they can quit their jobs with, um, with an advertising agency. Um, and my Facebook group grew from zero to a thousand people in five weeks. Wow. And at that point, people started asking, hey, do you have a course? Do you have a coaching program? Can I learn from you? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I can create one. Um, so if you guys do create an online course, um, a lot of people do it ass backwards. So what I did was I created a minimal viable course, meaning I had the outline of what we were going to do week to week to week. And I got people to pay for the course before I had even built out a single video. Yeah. So that way you're getting people to validate your program. You are walking them through the process by weekly group coaching calls, and you just need to be a week ahead of them with the videos. Um, so you just need to pr produce them a week ahead of time and then let them go through it and you're producing the next week. That way you're getting money in at the end of the six weeks, eight weeks, 90 days that you're teaching these people. Um, you have a course and you have a coaching program. <coughs> and those are two things that you can scale yeah. super easily. Yeah. Um, so that's what the route I went. Um, and then last year we did a little over half a million dollars from three different programs. Oh. Um, and that was, that was crazy. Uh, last year was a hustle. This year is systems, team build out, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I made a lot of money last year, but it didn't feel like a legitimate business. And now it feels like a legitimate business where it can, sure. it can start working without me in it. Sure. Um, so it's, it's just super powerful, but that's been my journey over the past year and a half. Um, and it's been crazy. I'm awesome. so so grateful. Can I, uh, I look, I'm really interested to hear like your take on this. Cause I'm, I'm literally going through this process myself where you talked about the hustle um, and, and grinding away and obviously making a lot of money during that process, but it sounds like it, it did, it potentially had a really big toll on you, you potentially your body and, and all those other things. Um, and now what you're talking about is systemizing things, not necessarily removing yourself completely, but taking away processes that aren't generating income or aren't best served to you, best served to someone else and, and things like that. Can you tell me a little bit about that process from hustle to systemize? Yeah. Um, so I think the best thing I did to make the transition was I stepped away for a little bit. Um, yeah. There was a month where I just like, I, I was dealing with burnout and breakdown and I was just like, meh. Yeah. Uh, then I went to a Buddhist monastery for a week, rediscovered my own personal values and kind of cleared my head. And I was like, okay, what ultimately what do I want? And um, I have 
this mission of helping people grow their tribes online and really create a business that's suitable for the lifestyle that they, they want to live. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, to answer your question, which was like, how do you get some of these things off of your plate? Yeah. Um, so creating SOPs and processes. System operating procedures and yeah. Yep. Um, yep. And all you really have to do is go through like what you do to produce a certain result, let's say onboarding a client. Yep. Film the processes of you onboarding a client. Um, you can use, uh, I use Loom, um, yep. from extension Loom, film it, yep. and then um, type out the SOPs. Yep. But you only need to do that one time and you need to show a VA how to do it. Yep. Then when you film your next video of a certain process, you can have a VA do that and just drop it into a Google Drive where your where your um, VA, your virtual assistant, will type out the SOP sure. for you. And structure your Facebook, or I use Google Drive, structure your Google Drive in a way that it's set up for your business with your systems and processes um, and all that stuff. Awesome. Um, and I'm just starting transition to using Asana as well. Okay. Um, as this, is, is Asana a CRM? No, Asana is a, uh, a project management software. Okay. So this house all your systems and processes and all that oh. stuff. Is and Trello, does that, is that something that's overtaking Trello for you? I, yeah, it's better than Trello. Yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You're the one who put me onto Trello. I was just really interested to hear your thoughts and, and feedback anyway. And Trello has absolutely changed my life. So I would definitely have to check out Asana. Um, so that's awesome. That's, that's great. Let's talk about, and let's dive into some details about like, we've been talking about Facebook groups. It's obviously the main source of your income last year. What makes a great Facebook Facebook group or what, what makes a profitable Facebook group, I should say? And what are, say, three tips that you have for anyone who's watching who might be interested in starting their own Facebook group? Yeah, I mean, what's going to make the most profitable Facebook group is just you showing up, providing value every single day um, and really giving a shit about people's problems and really um, not worrying about, like, over-delivering. Like I, there, I get questions all the time of like, am I putting too much stuff in my Facebook group? And no, like you can always go deeper in your paid programs. Like if you're not over delivering, then not as many people are going to go into your paid program. Yeah. Um, So over deliver with the value, um, do these interviews. These interviews are freaking awesome. And that way, like if you're worried about over delivering, somebody else is providing the value in your Facebook group exactly. and you can grow your network as well. You say, hey, I, you reach out to somebody that you probably couldn't talk to before. You say, I have a thousand people in the Facebook group that would love to learn from you. Do you want to hop on an interview in my Facebook group? Most everybody wants to expand their audience. Yeah. So it's a great way to attract new people, new awesome people that you want to connect with into your network. Um So starting out the Facebook group, the Facebook group name is the most important thing. So to give you an example, I was working with one of my clients who, uh, what they do is they put on um, live talks for entrepreneurs talking about their why. So they talk about their why and they condense it into a three minute speech and they film it, it's in front of a live audience. And then uh, the entrepreneur gets those videos and, um, and pictures as like to use on social media. So their whole thing is finding your why. And they were gonna call their Facebook group like discovering your why and your purpose, which is cool, but it's not attracting your ideal client. Like the people that are like, see that are probably gonna be lower level people that um, are going to join your Facebook group and probably not buy their $5,000 package. Yeah. So what we did is we changed the name to um, Why Warriors, discovering your why and le- leveraging it to grow your business or something along those lines. Yeah. So using um, some particular keywords in the in the title. Exactly. So yeah. that way we're attracting business owners and we're not attracting those people that like don't know what they're doing. Sure. And your client 
people who want to leverage their why to uh, to um, grow their business. So Facebook group name is really important. Think about the person that you want to attract into your Facebook group and you want to make it a mission as well. So have a mission for your Facebook group. My Facebook group starting out was, hey, we're going to get you to 10K per month with your advertising agency. Very clear, concise mission. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like a rallying cry and people just rally yeah. behind that. Yeah. Um, and then I would say number three, um, Hmm. while you're Uh, thinking about that i just want to add on to that last point because this is i feel what really helped after i like i had a facebook group that was growing um the facebook group that we're talking about now um into now um it was growing and it was more of a business network than anything else one of the things after i started working with you and and i really implemented what you just said is that tribe? It, I thought of it like a tribal feeling. Like what us the hot, the words that you used when when you were coaching me was us versus the world mentality, and really feel into that because my my whole incentive is that I want to give unfair advantages to people within this group that they can go out and implement use you know for their businesses and things like that, and. Um, that's why I don't hold back. That's why I love having interviews with people like yourself who freely give information, freely give value um, because it's not necessarily all about like collecting a paycheck right now. It's about cultivating an audience, building up value and all those other things. And that's not possible unless you have that tribal feeling, that togetherness, that like that whole, we're here as a team for a reason, for a purpose, and let's work together to add value to the community. So, yeah. Thank you so much for adding that. That (laughs) That's awesome. Um, And then I I think the last thing is just like, it's going to be a hustle at first getting people into your Facebook group, especially if you don't have an email list or any other lists of that sort. So private message people. Um, I have a cheat sheet to show you exactly what to private message people. So if you guys want that hashtag thousand, 1000 members down below, and I'll send you over that cheat sheet, 1000 members and, um, it's a cheat sheet to show you how to go from a zero to a thousand potential buyers in your Facebook group in under six weeks. Boom guys. If you, so just again, if you want to get a copy of that cheat sheet, hashtag 1000 members down below and uh, we'll get that out to you. Yeah. Boom. And it, it gets you the exact script of like, after you connect with somebody on Facebook, what to send them to get them into your Facebook group without coming off douchey or spammy or pushy or anything like that. Awesome. Boom. All right. So we've actually got a question that's just come through. What can I do for my executive assistant group that will help it grow? They are connecting with me on LinkedIn, but not connecting with me on Facebook. Um, yeah. Do you, yeah. Obviously, do you, yeah. You're happy to take this. Yeah. Uh, so um, are you welcoming all of them to the Facebook group? I mean, that's my first question. Every time somebody comes into your Facebook group, you got to make sure that you welcome them. Um, are, I don't really know without looking at it, but to troubleshoot, um, check out your numbers, your uh, insights, your group insights, see where it's at. You don't want to be below um, 60%. Yeah. Um, 60% is pretty much the cutoff for uh, the engagement rates. Um, if you're above that, it can be revived. Um, but it, it comes down to the value that you're putting in there and how consumable it is. And what I mean by that is, are you providing enough helpful information? And number two, are you doing it in a structured manner that people are actually going to consume it? So are you just going live? Or are you adding a title to your live that makes people want to watch? Yeah. Um, another thing, are your first two lines of your text posts compelling? Your first two lines of any post that you're posting on Facebook are the most important to bring people in because people have very, very short attention spans. They don't look at every post, but if the first two lines capture captures them, then they will read the rest of the post. Yeah. So just make sure that you're focusing on that. I think that's the best advice yeah. that I can give you right now. Without, I've, yeah, look, I've got, I do actually have some insights with Rita. She's only just started her group. 
um yeah so cool. she's yeah so she's she's yeah. just getting started out um but one of the main things i think rita in in relation to what andrew was talking about is just adding consistent value on a consistent basis as well um especially and andrew will probably agree especially starting out um when you have under 100 or even under a thousand members you've just got to consistently you know be showing up and giving value on a consistent basis and really building that reputation over a course of a period of time. Anyway. Yeah, all right. especially when you're first starting your Facebook group, the best thing that you can do is hit those people up in uh, Facebook Messenger, send them a quick voice message saying, yo, thank you so much for joining the Facebook group. Is there anything that I can support you on right now? Um, I'd love to make a Facebook Live for you or something like that. Um, and just that's the best way. Just personal touch, create those raving fans in your Facebook group that bring more people into your Facebook group. And then another thing that I did when I first started out that was super successful is I did uh, hour long strategy calls with people for free. I wouldn't do that again because that took so much time. And I was actually doing a 72 hour fast at that time where <laughs> I did 10 calls in three days. Oh, and it, shit. It was but those became my raving fans. At yeah. the end of the calls, I said, hey, can you post a testimonial in my Facebook group? People saw those testimonials. They trusted me more. And on top of that, of the 10 strategy calls I did, eight of those people eventually became buyers from me. So it's about providing the value up front and, and over delivering, and then they will buy from you down the line when you put those products in front of them. I love that. I love, I love like because so many people get caught up and focused in on new clients, new clients, you know, obviously new clients, new leads, this, that, the other, this strategy, that strategy, all of that's great. But what I love about what you just said, it's really focusing in on who, who's currently listening to you, who can you add value to immediately? You know, some, some simple strategies around just adding art, reaching out personally, asking questions, giving mm -hmm. some value because yeah, again, it's not always about, you know, grow, like numbers, all these other things are important in the long term, but for the short term to build your foundation, it's obviously important to build that customer base, build that yeah. raving fan base, and then scale from that point on. Yeah. It's all about quality at the beginning, not about the quantity. <laughs> Boom. All right. So let's, I, here's, here's one thing that I really respect about you, Andrew, obviously it's more than just the amount of money that you've been able to make the strategies, the, 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 the thing that you mentioned before as well about the care factor, there's a lot of people who it's like these numbers, half a million dollars, all those other things, all well and good, but like, how much does that person actually care about the people that are investing into them and, and stuff like that? It's obviously a very important part of what you do and, and who you are. What I'd love to start talking about um, are some of the daily habits that you've been able to implement um, during that process. Cause I know that whilst, you know, the business is great, everything's working. There's a lot of stuff that you've done in the background to show up and add value, to make sure that you're on point, to make sure you're caring and things like that. What are some of the daily habits that you've implemented in your life to get to this point? Yeah, I think the biggest contributing factor was taking things out of my life. Um, so removing things from my life that, that created space for more positive things in my life. So I took drinking out of my life. Um, I took negative influences out of my life. I don't watch TV anymore. Um, I don't watch, I haven't listened to the news. I don't know what's going on in politics. <laughs> I took all of that stuff out, which left space for, <coughs> for me to consume and create and to uh, consume more courses, to read more books, those sorts of things. And you're not going to put out anything you don't put in first. Like you've got, there's going to be this process, especially if you're first starting out where like you're, you're, you have value overload or you have information overload and you have shiny object syndrome all at the same fucking time. And just know that that's a phase like that's going to pass, but that's natural for everybody starting out. Yeah. Um, but uh, some of the daily practices, um, I mean, I used to meditate every day. I used to journal every day, all of that stuff. Um, but I think what's changed recently is just the organization in my life. Um, using Trello, using Google Drive effectively, 
um, and just organizing shit where like my to-do list is in Trello and that thing has been a godsend. Yeah. So if you guys aren't doing this, I would implement this like right now. I have a Trello board and the cards are in each, in, in this Trello board is the to-do list and then each day of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And whenever like I have a new to-do that comes to the top of mind of like, oh shit, I need to do that. I go to my phone, go to the Trello board, put in the to-do in that to-do category. And then I, uh, I assign it to a certain day when it's ready to be done on that yeah. certain day. Um, and then I mark it off and I don't, I make sure that I don't have more than five things um, per day or else I'll get overwhelmed. So using that Trello board has kept me so fucking organized. It's cleared up like brain space. So when I get it out of my brain, I have more space to like receive more things. Um, so that has been super duper helpful. Boom. I love it. Some really, really good insights there. Um, all right. So we have some questions. Is it best to start your own group or contribute to a larger one? Let you obviously let yeah. you take this one. Yep. So Ted, if you're just starting out, um, I would, if you don't have a good idea for a group yet, I would just start documenting your journey on your personal profile and in other larger Facebook groups. So um, one way that you can think of it is like treating a larger Facebook group like your boss, reporting back to that larger Facebook group of the results that you're producing in your life. For example, I bought into a program, Facebook ads for entrepreneurs. I use that private Facebook group for that program to say, hey, I just landed a client. Hey, I just, uh, I, I just um, uh, brought in 30 leads for this client this week. I reported back to it and people just saw my wins piling up, piling up, piling up. And I received all these freaking uh, uh, Facebook um, friend requests just because I was posting my wins in other Facebook groups. These friend requests pile up. They see me documenting my journey. Fans of the content that I'm producing on my personal profile. So when you're ready to open up your Facebook group, you can get a bunch of people in your Facebook group in one day saying, hey, I'm opening up this Facebook group. Comment down below if you want to be a part of it and then send them the link. Um, Jeff Miller, one of my first clients, uh, did strategy and got 500 people into his Facebook group in one day. And now he has over 33,000 people in his Facebook group over a year span. And he's monetized it to over half a million dollars in that time. Um, so just like, just focus on reporting back to those Facebook groups, tell people what you're doing and then document your journey on your personal profile. I love this See, because this is, this is really just coming back to people. And this is something that I talk a lot about um, is people buying into the person and the more that you can give insights into the human side, the, the challenges, the, the wins, you know, all those other things and consistently challenge yourself over that course of a period of time. It's, it's sort of like the, the soap opera sequence or, or whatever the case is, that, that whatever you, way you want to put it is, is people are just building into and buying into your story over a course of a period of time. And, and mm -hmm. um, I, can't, I can't stress the importance of what Andrew is talking about, um, you know, really, really being vulnerable with who you are, what you do and all those other things because people respect that so much. Um, and so Ted's just said, thanks as well. Um, but guys, the more that you can show the human element of, of what you do, no one is perfect. No one is, is, you know, is polished. Um, but the more that you can bring out the human element in what you do and all those other things, it really brings out, um, it really helps people to buy into the person, buy into your story, and they just get intrigued to know more. What what makes this person, you know, tick and, and things like that. And obviously, if you can then solve a problem at the end of that process where, you know, you can help someone else build their business or increase their profile or, or whatever the case is, whatever problem you are solving, ultimately, that's going to help as well. Yeah. All right. So a question from Rita, what books do you recommend? Uh, depends where you're at in your journey. Um, so let me know that, like how, how big is your business right now? Um, for, for me, I actually have 
book right here. Um, so this is the book that I'm going through right now. This is like the Bible of creating a legitimate business in terms of your creating your values, your mission, hiring people, all of that stuff. Scaling up is like the Bible of that. And that's where I'm currently at. But like, this is one of the books that I started with in terms of entrepreneurship, which is Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Expertsecrets.com secrets that gives you like an amazing base knowledge of digital marketing and frameworks and all that good stuff. Um, so Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson, um, Scaling Up by Vern Harsh, uh, Harnish, Vern Harnish. Um, V-E-R-A-N? Uh, V-E-R-N-E, and then Harnish, H-A-R-N-I-S-H. Um, and I love the four-hour work week by Tim Ferriss. That's ultimately what made me become an entrepreneur. Um, mm, uh, start with why. Uh, that's another good one. Um, let me go through. Hold on. Because my audible is just filled with books that like yeah. have changed my perspective on everything. Uh, bah, 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 bah. If you're into meditation, 10% Happier by Dan, Dan Harris or looking to get into meditation. That's an amazing book. Can oh, I just, yeah, sorry, you go. Yeah, the one book that totally fucking changed my life, especially when I was going through burnout and breakdown. It's called The Great Work of Your Life by Stephen Cope. Um, it, brought, it brought an element of spirituality into my life that I had been missing for the longest time. That's kind of been a driver since I've read it. So The Great Work of Your Life by Stephen Cope. It's really, really good. Awesome. All right. I've just dropped a couple of comments with some of those books and things like that. Can I just ask, and this may not, I, I may be setting myself up to shoot myself in the foot, but how has meditation looked? Were you meditating before you started this business? Uh, a little bit, but not religiously. Yeah. And so um, obviously, like you talked about, you know, going to a, a monastery um, and and a couple of other things. So obviously, this is, this is something that's now ingrained in you, I'm assuming. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and, and how has that had an impact on you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that not drinking, like quitting drinking probably has had the biggest impact. Um, quitting caffeine for six months had a huge, huge impact on me. It was three months of hell <laughs> because I was drinking like five to eight cups a day. Yeah. Right. Um, like just being super present and in the moment and not like all over the place and scatterbrain. Um, and my, my meditation sessions, um, were a lot deeper and, um, and they, I was way more clear after my sessions when I was meditating, when I was at, off caffeine. Um, but what it's done for me, especially in the longer sessions. So people say like, do 10 minutes a day. Ultimately, you're going to get the most out of it. If you do like 45 minutes to an hour, yeah. like that, you don't need to do that every single day, but if you can do it once a week, like you'll get out of those sessions and you'll be like, whoa, because <laughs> Doing those like 10 to 15 minute sessions and then it wasn't until I went to the Buddhist monastery and started doing like 45 minute to hour long sessions where there was a point around probably like the 30 minute mark where I was just like oh this is kind of what it's about I'm kind of yeah. present right now this is amazing yeah. um so those longer sessions have been way more beneficial for me um and it just helps you stop the chatter in your brain as much like you can you can start analyzing your thoughts a little bit more and be like that's a stupid thought like i shouldn't <laughs> think that and you can yeah. redirect your thoughts a lot easier um when when you create that space by meditating oh and, and the the app that i've been using uh is called insight timer so you just set a timer. They use like these gongs to alert you when it's time to meditate, when it, when your session's over and all that good stuff. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Andrew. And we'll, we'll start to wrap up. So guys, if you do have any last questions, anything else, please drop them below before we do finish. Um, there is one final question that I ask everyone who jumps on. And so first of all, how old are you right now? 
I'm 26. 26. And, and you've been able to create, oh, that blows me away. First of all, <laughs> secondly, my question is that I ask everyone who comes on, if you could go back and tell your 20 year old self, anything, what would it be? Uh, <laughs> for me, it would be stop drinking. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was an idiot back then. Um, can I ask, let's dive in. Let- I, I, I would, I would probably say you can change your life. I think back then I was like, am I always going to feel that I was super depressed. I was depressed for half a decade. Um, and that was because I was drinking too much. Um, I just, all these contributing factors. Um, and if, if I just had somebody that said like, you can change your life, like you're going to be fine. Yeah. Um, I think that, that, that time in my life would have been a lot, lot easier. Um, but just knowing like, it be patient. It takes time, but surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. Um, you, you are your environment. So find ways to develop a skill where you become attractive to those people that you want to attract in your life and then start surrounding yourself with those people. Boom. By offering your skill by offering your gift that you're able to give to them. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's brilliant. So guys, again, if you've gotten, if you've gotten value from this, I know I've definitely gotten some value and there's a couple of bits and pieces that I'm going to implement straight away. But guys, if you have gotten value, you like what you're seeing, make sure you drop the fire emoji down below, just so that we both know that we you've watched the end, you're getting value and all those other great things. Thank you so much again, Andrew, for jumping on. Um, really appreciate your time insights and things like that. If people are interested in finding out more about you, what you do, even potentially working with you, how can they reach out to you? Yeah. Just shoot me a DM. Um, and let me know what your favorite thing about, uh, that you got out of this interview was, that would be freaking awesome. Just start a conversation with me there. And then also we have that cheat sheet that I'm giving away hashtag thousand members down below. And I'll send you a cheat sheet on how to grow your Facebook group to a thousand potential buyers um, in five simple steps. Boom. Awesome. All right. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you again so much for your time and uh, have a, have an amazing, Oh, it's still Thursday for you. It's Easter (laughs) here. It's good Friday here in Australia. So uh, everyone watching, hope you have an amazing Easter, but thank you again, Andrew. Thanks for having me, brother. Thank you guys for watching.